Yeah, new week, new opportunity uh, with an in-state opponent um, that uh, is going to present a, a very difficult challenge for us in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, in special teams in the last three seasons, they've blocked 12 kicks, had multiple fake punts uh, on defense. Um, they present multiple issues with their run schemes, um, uh, d different uh, gap schemes in inside and outside zone with zone read components and RPOs. Um, and, and they've got a, a very good wide receiver and running back that create uh, difficulties for us uh, in what we're trying to do defensively. Um, offensively, they play multiple fronts and coverages. They've got some really talented defensive linemen, um, uh, really big guys up front that run, chase the football too long edge overhead uh, or overhang players that I think do uh, a really nice job of setting the edge and, and keeping contain. And then their middle linebacker, Jacob Morrissey, uh, is always around the football. Um, so, you know, they have our full attention. Uh, and obviously, being an in-state opponent uh, adds a little bit more uh, energy to the game and what we need to do in order to uh, have our goal, which is to be 1-0 and at the end of the week. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Eli, I know it's never one thing, but in looking at the film the first couple games, the, the run defense, are you, are you seeing more issues you know, at the line of scrimmage, or is it, is it second level? It's all levels. It's all levels. It's tackling. It's bad eyes. Um, you know, it's, it's gap integrity. It's beating the man across from you. It's uh, a lot of different factors that have to get cleaned up and fixed. Um, as poor as we, we did stopping the run, um, we still had an opportunity to win the game at the end of the game. And, and um, you know, I think taken away from that game was, you know, we got to find one more play. We got to find a way to make one more play, whether that's on the offensive side of the ball, whether that's as a coach, uh, make a better play call, or whether that's on defense, we got to find a way to make a play. Um, you know, several of the runs that led to big runs were after third down conversions um, where we didn't keep contain and the quarterback scrambled um, or didn't have uh, the proper zone drop uh, or didn't play uh, uh, aggressive enough in our man-to-man -man coverage. So a lot of different factors led to uh, uh, the performance on Saturday. Yeah. Now you've had a couple of days to think about it. Is there any part of it you're going to be Yeah, I think the I think the huge positive is as poorly as we played, um, we we if we make one more play, we have a chance to win the game, and that's that's a, a tribute to our team's refusal to give in, uh, to continue to fight, sc scratch and claw all the way throughout the game. Um, so those are uh, you know positive things. Um, you know, I, we're still trying to figure out who we are. I think we're starting to settle into where our strengths and weaknesses are and, and uh, got to start pushing towards those starting this week. Eli, you're pretty passionate about the response from your team and, and how you like the, the fighters mentality. Go back to the beginning of camp, you wanted to see more of a sense of urgency out of the first couple days of camp. So how have you seen that, I guess, fighters mentality develop over the last month or two? I mean, I think we saw exactly that on Saturday, um, down 14 nothing, um, down 21-7 with a chance for them to score. Uh, turn the ball over the first play or the second play of the second half. And none of those situations deterred us from fighting and staying focused on this play mentality and playing this play. And you look up at the end of the game, we got the ball at the plus 40, you know, and, and uh, a chance to try to go down there and tie it. And uh, that's what you got to do. It's never going to be pretty. I think the, the, the issue now with, with really anything is, is uh, especially in sports, is um, everything's a beauty contest. And it's not about the, the result, it's about how it looked and everybody who dissects and has an opinion about it, which is what it is. I'm not complaining about it, it's just the new, the new norm. Um, you know, for us as players and coaches, we have to focus on, at the end of the day, the results, what matters. Did you win or lose the game and how do you get there? And we had an opportunity and we got to find, one, uh, find a way to make one more play. Mm -hmm. Maybe externally, you're kind of preaching patience. Yeah. Just big picture wise, what's that balance like? Um, 
I mean, I think it's uh, you got to set expectations, but you also have to have a reality of, uh, you know, this isn't microwave win. This isn't microwave. All of a sudden, your SEC East uh, champions are competing for the SEC East. Like it's not miracle grow. Um, you can say all the right things. You can outwardly be doing all the right things, but it's still a growth process. Um, no different than when you plant a flower or you plant corn or, you know, my father-in-law is a farmer. Like you gotta, you gotta sow and and you gotta water the ground and you gotta tear up uh, weeds and you gotta battle heat and all kinds of stuff and then you'll reap the reward. And I think, you know, there's a lot of positive momentum and I know everybody wants it right now, but there's still a long process to be had um, on our football team. And I think we're getting there, but, um, you know, some of the teams that we're playing right now have, you know, 10 year head start on us in this program. And, um, you know, we got to get going and we got to get there faster. I know that's not going to make anybody happy, but it, it, that's the reality. And so I'm not discouraged at all. I was, uh, that was a heck of a crowd. It was a heck of a moment for our team. And, and we were right there and we got to find one more way to get that one more play, one more play. Well, hopefully the crowd. I mean, I hope hope people will, will come attend the game, um, not only from uh, from the Mizzou side, but also from the Southeast Missouri uh, side. Um, I think it gives the opportunity for kids who've always wanted to, to play in Furrow Field that may never, you know, not unfortunate. We can only give 25 of those scholarships a year, and so these are some other opportunities for people to come play in a you know a great stadium, a great environment. Um, I think it continues to, to show the importance of, of, of football in our state, uh, can kind of set the tone. High school coaches will be here. High school teams will be here watching, you know, players that played for them. So I think it's a, I think it's a huge positive. I think it grows the game in our state, which is ultimately what we got to continue to do. We're trying to be one and oh, we're trying to be one and oh, so we're trying to win this week. I, I don't. I don't worry about anything outside of how do we win a game this week. When you start doing all that stuff, I can't predict the future. If I could, man, I don't know if I'd be a football coach. I'd probably be a stock person, you know. So no, I, I don't worry about it. How much do you, in the course of a game, find yourself? Hey, maybe this was the plan going in, but this guy's hot, and, and we, he's got to be out there a little bit more than, than we thought going in. I mean, I think right now with Tyler. Um, you know, ultimately, we would like to find some other people who can share the load in the backfield. Uh, but on the road against a SEC opponent, you got to ride your horses. I mean, Coach Petrino used to say this at Arkansas FTS, man, feed the studs. You know, that's, that's, that's what you got to do. And so that's that's all. We're trying to be 1 0. Like, whoever gives us the best chance on that play uh, to execute at a high level is who's going to get it. And right now, Tyler's playing at a very high level. So um, we're going to ride that horse. Eli, what, what can you learn about a team and like a, a culture after a loss, just watching how they respond? Everything's different, I imagine. I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you look for is how much they have invested into it is shown by how much they're hurting. You know, how much did it mean to them? Uh, it was a really quiet locker room. Um, it was a really ticked off bus ride home, you know, bus ride and flight. It was. Yesterday, you know, Sunday, we went out and practiced and there wasn't a lot of smiling, you know. This team's invested um, and they're trying really hard to do what we ask them to do. And we're still not getting the results that we want. And you got to grow, you know, you can't grow weary while doing good. So we're going to see a result. We're going to see the harvest. We're going to get there. Um, you just got to keep doing the right things. You got to keep plugging away. And that's what we're going to do. I mean, Saturday was a, a setback. It, it wasn't a, you know, wasn't any more than that bump in the road, in my opinion. Jalen Carlisle's yep. past couple of weeks, what have you seen from him to put himself in a position to make some of those plays? Right yeah, you know, if J <laughs> we got to keep JC out on the field the whole game. Uh, you know, didn't play the first half versus Central Michigan and, and has a pick and only played in the first, pretty much the first half and maybe the last five minutes of the fourth quarter because of uh, some health issues at halftime. Um, we got to keep him out there. That dude's a playmaker. He's got three turnovers in basically one game. So we got to keep him out there. And, and uh, 
You know, he has a uh, – he's long, can run. He's physical. He's got great ball skills. He's an elite uh, – he's got the potential to be a, an elite player for us. Yeah. What is the importance of you know, having a, a pair of tight ends in the show that they can fix and add to this offense? Well, I mean, it, it actually goes back to the play doesn't care who makes it, and you can draw up plays, and, and if the ball is determined to go to that position based on the defensive reaction, then those guys are ready and, and prepared to make the play. And, and really, that's what happened on both of Daniel's uh, touchdowns um, was – you know, he was kind of the uh, uh, an outlet option for the quarterback, and and uh, was did exactly what he's supposed to do. And the quarterback found him, and, and same kind of thing on some of our RPO game in the past game where those guys were catching balls. Coach, last week you said Connor Bears last week you could work on third down. It seemed like you guys did a lot better on third down against Kentucky. What, what about this week? What would you like to see him improve on? Um, you know, I thought overall Connor played uh, pretty well. Just like everybody, we need to find one more play to win the game. Um, you know, the the I thought he did a really nice job of – I felt like in the second half I was extremely aggressive calling plays, trying to get some shots down the field. And he was doing a really good job of taking the check down and, and not forcing the ball. And I think that was a product of the second play. I, I'd made a terrible play call. And, um, you know, he forced the ball into a situation that it shouldn't have been there. And, that's on me, you know. I can't make that call, and, and like I told him, he's got to overcome coaching, uh, and and fix it for us. Um, so, really, I think uh, just continually be consistent in what he's been doing, and, and don't try to force uh, the ball into places it doesn't need to go. And he played today with a little bit more on Saturday of his plays, and, and Devin has taken almost all the snaps. Do you feel like you're close to having some other guys that, that can help out at that linebacker position? I mean, we really wish we were playing five guys at linebacker. But the reality of it is nobody stepped up in practice to prove that they deserve the opportunity to play. I mean, that's just the reality of it. We don't – this isn't open tryouts. Like, tryouts are on Monday and – on Sunday, on Tuesday, and Wednesday. And whoever's been playing has shown us on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that they deserve the opportunity to play, or they, they showed it during fall camp. So, you know, this isn't, well, those guys, we'll, we'll just try somebody else. Like, like I told them, if you don't like your role, practice better. I mean, it's not like we're trying to hold anybody back. It's not like we're trying not to play the best players. Like, sure, we, we, we would love not to be giving up 340 yards rushing, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, it, other people will play when they earn the opportunity to play. Great to meet you. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that guys were upset after the game, and also you know you mentioned kind of just the growth process of the program. What is your message to them in a moment like that? You know, especially emphasizing where you guys want to be when they're you know um, upset in a moment like that. Yeah, my message uh, really Saturday and Sunday were were very similar. We lost, but all is not lost. You know, we lost a game, but. There's 12, you know, 10 games left, and how you respond to that loss will determine the future of what we're trying to accomplish. And then, you know, Saturday, you know, Sunday after we watched the tape, it was, hey, I appreciate the fight, but we got to find one more play. And that's the only way I know to find one more play is either in the film room or at practice. That, that's where you find the way to make that one more play. You either got to watch more film and be more prepared, or you got to practice better and have better practice habits. And so, that's what we got to go do if we want to get this, uh, you know. Bad taste out of our mouth. Well, I, I you spoke a lot about it almost every game today. Um, is, is a game like this a, a good chance to see you all maybe some some younger players, some players on the periphery to do in a game like situation? The only way anybody's going to get a chance to play is if they earn the opportunity to play. This isn't this isn't rec league. This, this is college football, and the best eleven players are going to play. The guys who give us the chance to win the game. And uh, this isn't open tryouts. This isn't participation trophy. This isn't everybody gets a chance to play. I have no idea who's going to play on Saturday. I know this. I'm going into it with the mentality that the Southeast Missouri State team uh, is one of uh, a, a very good special teams operation. They've blocked 12 kicks in the last three seasons. They got multiple fronts and coverages, which give, gave us lots of issues last week against Kentucky and against Central Michigan. 
They run the football, which we ain't, we haven't stopped the run consistently in the first two games. So in my mindset, we've got to go play really well. And um, th that's it. And if anybody else plays, that's going to be determined based on the fact that they have earned the opportunity to play. Uh, not based on, well, this is a 1AA school and we're a SEC school, so so-and-so should get to play and Johnny gets to go ahead and get in the game this week. Now, that's, I don't ever think that way. And I sure as heck don't think that way with seven FCS teams beating uh, Division I teams this year. And I can go through that list if you want to. Um, our team has that list printed off in their lockers this week. Um, so we're very aware that anybody can win or lose on any given Saturday. So. If anybody thinks that they're just going to get to play this week because we're playing SEMO, they're absolutely insane. The only people that are going to play are the people that earn that opportunity on Tuesday and Wednesday by the way they practice. Coach Bennett, I know uh, I talked about you and you got the chance to talk to David Taylor, the, the Rockford freshman. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about and what, what did that conversation with you? Um, you know, honestly, I, I, I'd prefer just to keep that between uh, me and him. and. Uh, wish him well in his recovery and know that we're in his corner. But, you know, I, that that was just, uh, you know, just something we, we, we felt like we wanted to do. Eli, back to the passing game, how close do you feel like some of those vertical shots are being completed? Is that still a real work in progress? Or are you seeing pretty close? Um, it's kind of hit and go. I mean, they played a lot of deep coverage. Uh, I mean, basically try to keep everything in front of them. I think there was really – there was two balls that really shouldn't have been thrown and then maybe the first play of that uh, – the last drive that Mookie actually got behind him and we just we just didn't really commit to the throw uh, that, that we needed to make at that point. Um, I, I think we're close. I think we'll get there. I think it's just a, a product of uh, coverage matching what we're trying to do. But, again, I think – the design is to be aggressive. We talk about if the stage is set, take it. But if the stage isn't set, then we have outlets. And I thought uh, that's really where Connor had some of his best reps. Eli, when you look at plays, what can you say about everything that you've done the first two games and the way you slid in there and produced? Um, I mean, I think he's doing um, – he's being productive. Right, making tackles, and he's making some big plays when we need him. Um, yeah. Eli, you spoke earlier this year about the growth of Connor Tolliver. I know he's from near where Simo is in Jacksonville, but can you speak about just how he's grown this year from the program? Yeah, Connor was a, a freshman early enrollee, um, has played really three different positions for us this year in, in – uh, spring and in fall camp, both the center position and the, and the tackle position, and, and done a nice job. He's very athletic. He's got the right mindset. He's got the right haircut to play offensive line. And so, um, you know, really are excited about his potential and growth here as a, as a Missouri Tiger. Anything else for Coach? Thanks, Tim. Yep, thank you all.